Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. In this session of atomic structure, we'll talk about wave function plots. Okay, so we'll look at some graphs. Okay. So what is wave function that we have already studied? We have seen that wave function has no direct physical significance to us. But we have seen that its square modulus represents probability density, right? So wave function was psi. Okay, so this has no physical significance. It is only used to obtain the information on three quantum numbers N, L and M. But the square modulus, okay, square modulus of psi, okay, this represents probability density. That is what is the probability per unit volume of finding an electron in a given region. So if I multiply this psi square with volume, okay, let's, uh, let's say the volume is dV okay the differential volume is dv so psi square dv will give you the probability of finding the electron in a particular region okay so that's what we'll be drawing now on graphs okay so before doing that if you remember psi can be broken down into two different parts one is the radial wave function part okay the wave function is broken down into radial wave function and the other is angular wave function which depends on angles theta and phi okay whereas radial only depends on the radius or the distance from the nucleus so the thing is the plots of angular wave functions become very complicated we will not go into them whereas those of radial wave functions are pretty simple and those are the ones which we can very easily draw and remember okay and even discuss about and if you look at 1s 2s 3s okay the all the s subshells irrespective of the shell number the s subshell has symmetry in radial direction that is as we go away from the nucleus there are no angular distortions in s subshell right if you remember the nodes that we studied angular node and radial node so s subshell always has zero angular nodes all right everything happening over there is in a radial direction that means the wave functions of s subshell whether it is 1s 2s 3s 4s will not have an angular component in its angular wave function so that means the plots for wave functions of s subshell will be same as their plot for ra their radial wave function okay more or less uh, at least in essence they will be same you can say okay so this means either we will be drawing only the radial wave function for say 2p 3p 3d so on or we will be drawing the wave function diagrams for only the s subshell 1s 2s 3s and so on because we can only talk about radial wave function at our level we cannot discuss angular wave function due to their complexity so let's start with plot of 1s all right so now see there is something that you do have to keep in mind that you cannot exactly deduce all the complete plot by yourself you have to memorize it at the end okay and uh, the thing is we'll only look at the plot and try to deduce or make some deductions from there so plot of 1s if you look at the psi okay versus r r is the distance from the nucleus and psi is the wave function so now one psi is not really important so we'll just quickly look at it and know that psi is never negative okay the least value of psi can always be equal to zero so at nucleus it has maximum value irrespective of which shell or subshell you are talking about okay so at here it is maximum and at infinity it is taken to be zero okay that is our assumption because it decreases to so low a value that we can assume it to be zero so it will start here and it has to end here so how will it look and it is a smooth curve so this is how psi versus r or plot of wave function of 1s subshell looks like now psi is not really important to us right so what we'll look at now is psi square r okay that is the radial wave function square okay so we are not just looking at psi now we are looking at psi square and we know that psi square represents the probability okay the probability of finding the electron so in case of 1s it's actually similar to this one okay only thing is it becomes more steeper because it is now squared 
okay otherwise it is just exactly same as psi versus r the nature is similar one is has no nodes okay if you remember total number of nodes since we are talking about one is all the nodes will be only radial nodes so number of radial nodes is n minus l minus 1 which in case of one is is zero hence psi will never become zero okay before infinity and that is why psi square will also not become zero before infinity now let's look at plot of 2s okay again we'll draw two plots okay one is the plot of psi and the other is the plot of psi square okay so again let's look at these two plots here the number of radial nodes are n minus l minus 1 is equal to 2 minus 0 minus 1 which is 1 so it has one radial node that means the value of psi will become 0 at least once before infinity so again at nucleus it starts at very high value and at infinity it goes to very low value and in between somewhere okay in between somewhere it becomes zero so this is how it looks all right this is how it looks to us the next graph is of psi square versus r now psi square okay let's just focus on psi square forget psi so psi square gives us probability so probability in a nucleus is always very high okay probability density sorry and at infinity it is always taken to be zero infinity is taken to be a node but that node is not counted in our formula of nodes so in between there is going to be a node so it's going to be at same place like before all right let's plot it again okay. so here okay so it looks something like this and it becomes zero over here and it has to be zero over here as well so what happens is it rises and it has a local maxima and then it again goes back to zero this is the plot of psi square versus r for 2s all right so this here represents a node okay a radial node that is a node in radial direction okay. similarly you can plot the diagram for 3s for 3s number of nodes will be n minus l minus 1 radial nodes are 3 minus 0 minus 1 which are 2 so in this case okay in this case it becomes 0 twice now directly let's plot the diagram of psi square it starts here it will end here so and it has to become 0 two times in between so one let's say it becomes here so it will again go to a local maxima then again it has to become 0 and then it rises up and again it goes to infinity okay so this is how plot for 3s will look like so it has two nodes and hence two local maxima and remember that there is another thing which you can remember that this maxima this obviously represents the greatest value of probability density it keeps on rising after each node okay so this the second or the subsequent maximas are always okay longer or you can say at a higher value of psi square okay. so this is all you need to know okay that is all you don't have to go into details how these plots came up why these plots came up we just saw looked at nodes and some maxima and a, a crude nature of the plot okay so basically this was the last topic that we needed to study in structure of atom this finishes up a structure of atom completely the next chapter we'll study is states of matter okay so until then keep on studying and remember that structure of atom is very scoring very easy it is completely formula based as far as numerical questions are concerned so you should focus on that pretty much all right so until next time and once again thanks for watching edupedia world videos